H2K Infosys provides world-class online IT training, staffing and software testing solutions to customers worldwide. H2K Infosys, how we are different from our competitors. 100% job oriented training, hands-on project work, cloud test lab, resume preparation and review, mock interviews, robust syllabus, one-time fee and lifetime access to classes, access to recorded sessions of live classes. H2K Infosys has won the trust of thousands of students worldwide. For a free demo class, visit us at h2kinfosys.com. So yesterday we started discussing about PIC and we had seen lot many transformations as well, right? So anyone remember what are the transformations that we had discussed yesterday? At least few, I expect. Come on guys, okay, good, group, think, think, at least I want you to recollect the names, maybe not the functionality, at least you have to remember the names, that's what I'm expecting. Rahul has answered me group, no one else. Okay, go group. <laughs> I know you had seen this uh, slide, right? <laughs> okay. What else? I want Akshay, Arjun, Nisha, Prabhati to answer. Rahul, you can hold on. <laughs> At least you have shared two. Okay. So no shoes. At least I will write them. Hopefully you will remember. Union, do you remember this? Distinct, split, filter, sample, limit, order. Guys, you all remember all this? At least the names. Give me a yes for this at least. Okay. Good. Fine then. Okay. So, yesterday we stopped discussing about co-group, right? So, we will go ahead today. So, as you remember, the main difference between group and co-group is group is used only for a set of file for grouping the keys in it but when it comes to co-group it is used for uh, grouping multiple relations so it is much like a join but there is a slight difference between a co-group and a join once I come into join I will explain you so for a co-group it can be defined as a join plus group and we can group only same element in multiple relationships but not on different elements in co-grouping okay so let me go into this co-group groups together tuples from multiple relations its function much like a join okay the functionality or uh, the format that you have to follow for co-group is co-group 
alias by some column name and again alias by some column name and you can dump it so if you see here the output will be in the format of group comma bags the collection of bags so it might be a1 a2 a3 or b1 b2 b3 so whatever but the key is here a3 and b3 where they are common in both the different both of your files okay whereas group always generates two fields in its output scope group always generates three so it has a group and then a bag of, from one file and a bag of another file the first field is a group field where all the second and third fields are bags to ignore group keys that doesn't exist for a relation one can add the inner keyword to the operation so someone has been okay okay so if you remember or if anyone is aware of sql in joins we have many kinds of joins such as inner join uh, full outer join left outer join right outer join in that kind we have in co groups also different kinds of joins so for example if you have a situation like uh, select employees of all ages it would be kind of full outer join or if you imagine that there are two tables and if i give a query like select employees of all the ages in my right relation it is like a right outer join so it will give you the keys of i mean it will give you all the keys that were available in your right hand table so suppose again you have two tables employee table and some ages table okay and if i give a query like select employees of all the ages then it will give all the ages apart whether if for that particular age even though the employee is available or not so here i have employees like a b c d s s f g okay and they have different ages maybe 34 23 34 38 and in your ages table you might be having the information of 65 34 25 so if you have in this way if i give a right outer join i will get the collection of all the keys of all the ages so here i have ages for 65 34 25 and 29 so even though i have a match or i doesn't have a match in my emp table during my join i will get all these ages in my output so if you take 34 i have a match in my emp table and my output would be like key comma frd so the frd pack would be there in your output but if you take 65 i don't have the color, i mean input in my employee table for 65 age but even though in my output i would be getting group comma bag as 65 comma empty table that's it so that is what full order join talks about so in the sorry right order join talks about so in the same way it is just an opposite for left outer join so whatever the employees you are having in your left left table you will be getting or you will be fetching all those employees despite of the ages information is available or not and the inner join is like it will give you outputs only for your common ages so it will give you output only for 34 if you give a inner join on these two tables employee and ages you would be getting only a single output row that is for 34 okay so let me explain you few joins also so that you will be feeling comfortable
uh, any one of you have tried installing pig in your system okay so is it successful rahul so are you getting any errors hopefully you shouldn't get any error because it's like a minimum admin part involved in it okay fine cool okay okay good rahul so i mean it's the case with all the remaining ecosystems as well if you take hive or maybe hbase the installation part is very easier the only toughest part is installing uh, the hadoop itself that's it okay i have all these three files fine if you remember yesterday we have loaded pig1 pig2 and pig3 files right good so where are we first of all let let us load the data into pig system No, 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 no. The format is different, so that's the reason I gone back. Okay. see pick two first so let us see a sample in our co group okay so if you remember our pick file contains this information and our pick2 file contains this information right now i am trying to give co group for pick1 by f1 and pick2 by f2 so here i should be getting matches only for your data that is available for both pig1 and pig2 let us
so here you are getting the output in this way because you don't have a actual matching so that's the reason you are getting but if at all I give the same maybe F1 and here F3 So now let us see how the output look like. See, now you are having the actual matchings and that's the reason you are getting the actual key which is the common value whatever I had given. So ABC is the matching value in your both files. So here F1 is having A and here F3 is having A. So that's the reason I had given the actual keys and I am getting the output in this actual variable. So that's how the co-group works. But you will be getting the same results even in join but in the join the output format will be looked in some other different way so I will show you that as well so another way to do inner join in pig is to use the join operator the main difference between join and then inner co-group is that join creates a flat set of output records so for example if you take the co-group for your ABC that were available so if you remember our ABC was zero one two and one comma three comma four that was my A and my B was 0, 5, 2 and 1, 7, 8. Okay. So, where is my mouse? Okay. So, I did it by inner and 2 is the common value that I had seen in F3 and here F3. So that is the reason I got outputs of 0, 1, 2 and only 0, 5, 2. So it is your group and then the collection of your back. But the same thing if I take it here in join, I would be getting both these bags collected together into a single bag. So here if you see the output of join, it is like 0, 1, 2, 0, 5, 2. So here you don't have the group actually. So the format would look like whatever the bags that were available that is A1, A2, A3, B1, B2, B3 all collected into a single bag. So let me show you here also. Okay, we have pick one and pick two files and I am trying to join it.
Now see your a file sorry the pig1 file is having the values in this way a comma a comma 1 b comma b comma 2 and a comma double a comma double 1 a comma double a, triple a comma triple 1 in that way and pig2 has xx a y y b and all this so here i am joining with f1 and f3 so column 1 in pig1 file which is abc's and column 3 in pig2 file again which is abc so my output is just the combination of these values with the key if at all I have any combination I will throw it all the values and again for A so here if you take A values I am having 1 2 and 3 so all join together as with this file as A A A this way which is one combination and the second tuple of your pig1 with your first tuple of pig2 and again again the last tuple of a combination of pig1 with your a combination of pig2 so totally you got three rows for key a here you are not getting your values as key comma values that is group comma, group comma collection of bags it is only collection of bags so that is the difference between join and your co-group ok so any questions on this join before I proceed further let me explain you one more as well there will be cross join ok so this is also a kind of join where the cross name indicates that each tuple in a file will be combined with all the tuples of the other file so it is like a combinations and permutations so that is what the difference between a join and a cross join in join you would be joining the tuples only if you find the key value and here even though you don't have the key combination you will getting all the combinations see a is combined with everything b is combined with everything like that you would be getting See, if you take only a a1 your a1 is combined with all the tuples of pig2 file so a a1 is combined with x x a y y b x double x b z z c so the same will be repeated for b as well so that's how your co-grouping will happen sorry cross join will happen let me execute for this as well So see, here you are getting all the combinations of all your tuples. So that's what cross join is about. So let's move on to other transformations as well. The next transformation is for each. Uh, this is also uh, an important kind of transformation where you would be using this a lot when you start working on okay it goes through all tuples in a relation and generate new tuples in the output so most of the times you would be in a situation like you don't need actually all the values of that were, that were containing in your bag so at that moment you can ease use this for each so whatever alias you have in your output you can just 
give a for each command for that alias and you can generate only whatever the columns that you need so that's what the functionality of for each is about so let's take an example if you remember C in our examples what we are discussing C is nothing but union of A and B right so it is the combination of all these four tuples and what I am doing here is for each C generate A2 comma A2 into A3 so generate A2 comma so I am generating only these columns that is 1 3 5 and 7 and in that I am given an expression rather than a column also in my output so here I can give expressions as well till now we had uh, received only columns or else we have fetched only columns but here we can give expressions as well so here I am giving as a2 comma a2 into a3 so if you take the first tuple it is 1 into 2 the second one is 3 into 4 the next one would be 5 into 2 so that's the reason you are getting your output as 1 comma 2 5 comma 10 3 comma 12 and 7 comma 56 so 56 is nothing but 7 into 8 so that's what whenever you give a for each command you should be having a another transformation which is also called as generate so these both are like mandatory combinations that you have to give so if you want to use for each you have to use generate and vice versa so for each is always followed by an alias name given to a relation followed by the keyword generate the expressions after generate control the output at its simplest we use for each to project specific columns of a relation in the output okay so along with the relation I can give I mean along with the columns I can give expressions as well to get any manipulated output okay I can give for each with other combinations as well so let's see those one as well here I am giving for each G generate group comma C dot A1 so I am generating the group value along with an expression so here the keys would be the groups again that is 248 and then I am fetching those values let me show you an example for, for each also so now here I am just giving a for each relationship for only one single file so if you take your pig one file that is AAA BB2 like that I am generating F1 and F3 so I am generating only the first column and my third column so my output would be A comma 1 B comma 2 C comma 3 A comma double 1 A comma triple 1 B comma so that would be an easier one so I'm not going to do it but let me give a good one for you ah, see this will helpful for you first let me give the command meanwhile it's executing I can explain you Oops. script failed pass and defined alias group by one oh okay hopefully the group by one alias have been dropped down when I quit from my pick I mean pick system so that's the reason it is telling group by is not available so I have to see where I had generated this group by first so here I had generated group by so uh, guys remember one thing whenever you come out of pick all your aliases will be dropped down and if at all you want to do any functionality of the aliases that you had done earlier you have to do it again no other option okay 
so so I'm not going to create those aliases again but I will explain you here itself okay so what I am doing is on my group 1 I am generating the group comma count of pick 1 so in my output in my input file which is my pick 1 file I am having a comma a comma 1 and all this stuff okay here I am generating group comma count of pick 1 means for each of the key I am generating the count of all those values so the count of all the tuples that were that are available in my input file for that particular key if you take a for this key I am having three tuples one is a a one and another one is a comma double a comma double one and the third one is a comma triple a comma triple one so that is the reason for group for key a I am generating a comma three and the same if you take for key b I am having two values so that is the reason I am getting as b comma two and for the other one I am getting as c comma one because for c I am having only one single tuple and if I apply a count on this c I would be getting it as c comma one so that's what for each group is about and the next one is flatten the flatten function is designed to flatten nested data types okay even though I do any functionalities on these uh, number of groups or number of input files if I give flatten again I would be getting all the output values in a single tuple okay if I if at all I don't give this flatten function on my actual command I would be getting as key comma or else group comma the combination of bags the reason I am getting it as a single tuple is I had given a flatten command on my C so the flatten function is designed to flatten nested data types it looks like a function such as count and average but it's a special operator as it can change the structure of the output created by for each and generate so here for each and generate I am getting it as 2 comma 0 1 and 0 5 of all the tuple combinations on this particular k value if I apply flatten I would be getting the output as 2 comma 0 comma 1 comma 0 comma 5 oh. is it the same with everyone am I audible to you guys okay okay fine okay so I'm just explaining the flatten command uh, for those who haven't heard uh, this concept it is nothing but whatever the outputs that I am generating by for each and generate command by using flatten I would be getting it in the form of as a single tuple rather than a combination of group comma collection of tuples in a bag so for this particular k alias if I apply a flatten command I would be getting the output as 2 comma 0 comma 1 comma 0 comma 5 so that's what the functionality of a flatten command okay so that's it is just showing you as group and then group comma and then whatever the bag values that you are having so there is no combination or nesting up of your bags and the next one is parallel so this is a different kind of transformation when compared to all the transformations that we had discussed till now so till now we had discussed it like uh, if at all I want to fetch anything or I want to do some combinations or maybe selections it's kind of all that transformations but this particular transformation has a, a different functionality compared to those so let's see what it is on many operators you will see an option for parallel n the number n is the degree of parallelism you want for executing that operator in practice n is the number of reduced tasks in Hadoop 
that pig will use if you remember i told you that each of the pig script would be converted into mapreduce programs internally so whenever the mapreduce functionality is coming into picture there will be a mapper driver and then reducer and whatever that were there in our mapreduce concepts so here the parallel command will give a uh, will give a functionality over reducers like a command of on how many reducers you should be using so if at all in my program I want to use only five reducers then I can give as parallel five so that my pick script will be having an internal execution of five reducers only so the sample command would be like alias is equal to distinct of whatever the function or whatever the output you have generated after few commands in pick and parallel of n so here the performance of your pick script is going to be increased that's it the output is not going to be changed if you remember reduce is just used to increase your performance but the output will not change even though I give my reduce or not okay so that's what the same functionality here also it will just increase your performance and the recommended number of reducers to be used is like node minus 1 into 0 0.05 into your RAM capacity so it is this functionality is more much more confusing but in in the real world you don't need to follow this actual command you can just use your reducers in a simple way like less than 10 reducers or something like that but remember you don't go for much more reducers than it required for your complexity of your pick script okay it this is just a recommendation it depends uh, like how much busy your cluster is about so this will give you enough parallelism to run your pick script in more optimized way so that's what the functionality of parallel is about so uh, before I close these transformations I will explain you uh, some more operators which are called as diagnostic operators so we had seen till now all the transformations so there is another set of operators which are called as diagnostics operators okay those were called as describe illustrate and explain so these are the three different diagnostic operators that were available okay so the describe command it will print a relation of that schema Illustrate command shows a sample execution of the logical plan. Maybe for a generated subscript kind of. and explain you prints the logical and physical plans as well so let me show you the describe command or something you can try it at your home as well but I will give you a sample one By group by one is available or not okay let me see whether group by one is there or not
H2K Emphasis provides world-class online IT training, staffing and software testing solutions to customers worldwide. H2K Emphasis – How we are different from our competitors. 100% job oriented training, hands on project work, cloud test lab, resume preparation and review, mock interviews, robust syllabus, one time fee and lifetime access to classes, access to recorded sessions of live classes. H2K Infosys has won the trust of thousands of students worldwide. For a free demo class, visit us at h2kinfosys.com.